It was outside the old Jackson's Airport Terminal in 1997 that Prime Minister Bill Skate publicly and unceremoniously sacked his deputy Chris Iveta. The Prime Minister had just returned from an overseas meeting and while he was away, an associate released videos of him boasting about alleged crimes. The man in question, Mujo Sefa, also secretly filmed the Deputy Prime Minister and the Defence Minister appearing to receive cash bribes. I don't need money. I'll take Prime Minister Skate held a news conference inside the terminal announcing the sacking of the PPP leader Andrew Bain and the Deputy Prime Minister Chris Iveta. From today, I have sacked Chris Iveta and Andrew Bain. They conspired. It is alleged they conspired. As from today, they are two sacked. And outside, Skate told him that he had been sacked when Iveta came to welcome him back. All the events were recorded by MTV and the ABC. I want to be honest with you. I sacked you today, and I've sacked Andrew Bynum. I think you okay. people really set me up. No, bro, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I'm so waiting I... for you to come back, so... He's no longer the Deputy Prime Minister. Okay, Prime Minister, we'll see you. Okay, that's a vote. Well, the Prime Minister has the prerogative to sack any minister. All of this has now become part of the tapestry of Papua New Guinea's rich yet troublesome and sometimes infuriating political history. 1997 to 1999 were turbulent years for the country. In the first quarter of 1997, word came out that the government of Sir Julius Chan was in talks with a British security contractor, Tim Spicer, and they were jointly planning to bring in South African mercenaries to end the decade-long Bougainville crisis. As Australia, behind the scenes, urged Papua New Guinea against the decision, the government was determined to proceed with the hefty security contract. After news broke in Australia, the NCD governor and opposition MP Bill Skate became the strongest of the political voices against the Sandline contract and against the Chan government. Behind the scenes, NGOs led by the Melanesian Solidarity Group formed an alliance with other stakeholders and politicians. At Murray Barracks, the PNG Defence Force commander Jerry Singerok issued instructions for Sandline mercenaries who'd been sent to Wewek to be disarmed and placed under arrest. Singerok then went to NBC Radio and called for the Prime Minister to step aside. Over the following days, the tense situation escalated into riots in Port Moresby. And eventually, the mercenaries, publicly humiliated, were expelled from the country. 1997 was also election year, with Sandline still fresh in the minds of voters. Key political leaders lost their seats, including Prime Minister Sir Julius Chan. When Parliament met after the elections, Bill Skate was voted into office as Prime Minister. But Skate's term in office was plagued with a host of problems, economic and political, including allegations of bribery and corruption. The Skate government had taken over at a time when political allegiances were as fluid and unpredictable, and some would argue far worse than the decade of the 80s. When Bill Skate came to power, the country's cash flow had been severely hampered by 10 years of war on Bougainville, and these problems were further compounded with controversy surrounding the political and economic decisions he made at the time. And one of those decisions was to employ former World Bank head of PNG, come consultant Dr. Piruz Hamidian Rad, on a 7 million kina contract. The opposition was furious and they traded blows both inside and outside of parliament. Hamidian Rad developed the 1999 budget with recommendations to cut funding to important sectors like education, health, and law enforcement. On an even grander scale, the controversies reached outside of PNG's boundaries. Government attempts to give diplomatic recognition to Taiwan in the hope of funding support fell through after it was revealed very publicly. When the Mujo Sefa tapes were broadcast on Australian television and later on MTV, the Prime Minister was overseas. When he returned, he underestimated the impact of the news. At the airport, the PM tried to downplay the news, but when prompted during questions, he announced the sacking of his deputy Chris Iveta and coalition partner Andrew Bain. Coalition MPs immediately withdrew their support. With Iveta gone from cabinet, Pangu split into two camps. We withdraw our support from Bill Skate. Maybe I read it as all, go inside and run him country. 
As time went on and faced with immense pressure from within his own ranks and the opposition, Skate resigned paving way for the election of a new prime minister. And after a lot of wrangling in the weeks leading up to Skate's resignation as prime minister, Mr. Morata, 99. Coalition leaders, including John Pundari, made a decision to back Sir Makere Morata as Prime Minister. I now declare Mr. Makere Morata as the Prime Minister-elect of the independent state of Papua New Guinea. Uh, 